everyone and welcome back to Deersley. I'm trying to catch up now with my updates. I missed the March one so we'll call this a quick March-April update. Much of my free time over the last couple of months has been uh, taken up with making the crane uh, kit and that uh, is now complete and hopefully you've seen the, uh, the videos of that. Now I've made time to um, sort out one or two small problems with my track. In the front of the picture here you can see my uh, sector plate. I've, I referred to it as a traverser earlier on in my uh, videos but it's, it's a se selector plate. Um, it pivots up here somewhere and it, it moves around to switch trains from the incoming line onto storage sidings. I have, since my initial one where the sidings were all passive, I've made them uh, active now and I've, I've made indicators at the end, which are micro switches, which have switched on little lights on my panel to tell me when each siding is occupied. This uh, sector plate originally just had this line here, but I've added another section uh, to take a second line. You can see the point that operates it on this shot here. And there's a point motor as well. Uh, so incoming traffic from my uh, railway, from Deersley, uh, can go onto the sector plate, um, or I can use it, this area also, as a, a further storage siding. Which means I have now got eight storage areas, if you include the selector plate, as an actual storage, there's eight, and then I have three storage sidings which are passive, which I can simply swing the selector plate round in order to pick up uh, stored stock. This is a close up shot of the micro switches I've arranged as a kind of buffer stops, I suppose, at the end of each of my hidden storage sidings. So as the locomotive approaches, the lever on the micro switch is activated and the light is switched on on the panel to say that uh, this, this um, particular siding is occupied. I have found the spring on this micro switch is quite strong and amazingly it will actually push the locomotive back fractionally and therefore turn the light out on my indicator. You'll hear the switch activate and then deactivate um, as I show you it coming up, so I'll, I'll just be quiet and let you hear that. Can you see? That momentary pushback is enough to have disconnected the switch again. Over on my workbench is a bank of uh, three switches uh, for sidings one, two and three. After a bit of experimenting I found that all I needed was to extend the, um, the lever uh, part of this so that the same amount of pressure would hold it in position. Uh, I'm going to have to raise um, the height of these so I've cut some more. Uh, another set of riser blocks here and I will glue these in position underneath first of all and just raise the height. Then I can drop down an extra bit of material to increase the leverage. I've now finished modifying all the switch units uh, for my uh, buffers. I've extended the, um, the levers simply by using some one millimeter plastic card cut and super glued onto the, uh, the switches. Each has a slight, uh, a sort of small buffer behind that, so not too much pressure is, is put overall on the switch. They seem to work fine, so um, I'll just test them again with the locomotive. So here are the altered switches fitted on my sector plate, and now I'll just test them again with the loco. I'll be quiet so you can um, hear the click the switch make 
I'm pushing the loco at these stages by the way. I've got no power to the sector plate. There, the click's been made. Now I'm just going to take my finger away from the locomotive. Now you saw it pushed back uh, as before, but the switch is still engaged. If I now just pull the uh, loco away as if it's pulling away from the buffers, you'll hear the click again as the uh, switch disengages. There, there. That's great. That's a lot more positive than it was before. The only problem I have now is fitting the sector plate back in position. Um, I've been adding and modifying this over a period of time. So it's been connected um, to the uh, main part of the uh, layout with 11 uh, different wire connections. What I did before I took it off is to is to label on either side of the cut before I cut through the wire. So each one of these is numbered and corresponds with a number on the layout. What I might do is just wait now and fit a, a multi-pin or a couple of multi-pin plugs and sockets so that the next time I want to remove this sector plate it's going to be a much easier task. As I said at the beginning I've done very little on my railway other than uh, the crane build in these last few weeks but I have managed to get the, um, the scenic cover uh, for my control panel fixed. It's a nice size area. I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with it yet but I've got it uh, fixed in place and painted. I'll just remove it so you can see uh, the control panel underneath. This one I have uh, finished. I've even got the uh, town lights on it. All it needs is a little bracket now to, um, to fix it to the board which I'll do in the coming month. The only real additions to my stock is this rake of uh, four Backman uh, mineral wagons. Um, they need weathering of course. I've got some uh, Parkside Dundas ones I can now make up. With the track almost complete I'm turning my attention more to operating goods and passenger and I'm working on some timetables and um, hopefully I can show you progress on that as well next time. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this very short uh, update. Uh, please subscribe and like in the normal way. And thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.